Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to The Pen Habit, where we try to answer that age-old question, how in the world can he talk about one ink for 20 minutes straight? I'm your host, Matt Armstrong. So thanks for joining us for another Ink Spot review. Today's Ink Spot review is going to be a little different and kind of fun, I think. It is from a company based in California called Tekker Inc. T-E-K-K-E-R. Uh, and Tekker Inc. was started by a couple of friends who came up with this really cool idea of custom ink in whatever color you want in small batches. So uh, for $17.50 for 100 milliliters of ink, which is actually a pretty good price, you can pick whatever color you want and name it whatever you want. They will mix a batch of ink in that color and send it to you. Now, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing because, and there are threads about this online you can find out if you care about it, but it's uh, the difference between additive color and subtractive color and how accurate is your monitor, your computer monitor. So if you pick a color, how accurate is it going to be when you get the ink? All of that kind of thing. I unfortunately did not pick the colors of ink. I, you know, I picked general ink families, but they, uh, they sent the ink to me. So um, I didn't get to pick the actual hex code. But if you go to the website, they've got a little color picker there. Or if you know the hex code, if you're into web design or any of that kind of thing, and you can figure out the hex code of the color you want, uh, they can ink, generate the ink for you. Um, so this is a 100 milliliter bottle, as I said, and uh, it's kind of a cool ink. So I asked for an emerald green and an aubergine purple, and this is the emerald green color that they sent me. Really interesting ink, really fascinating concept, but let's go through all of the properties of the ink, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the fulfillment process. So I'm going to start by going ahead and writing with this ink in a few different pens to kind of show you how it performs. So we'll start off with the uh, Jin Hao 599, and this is a fine nib. Then we have a medium nib. This is a Lamy Vista I U M Lamy Vista. We have a nice wet broad nib. This is a Lamy. All Star. We have a 1.5 millimeter stub. 1.5 millimeter stub. And this is a Twisby Vax 700. A little bit of flex writing. And finally, a three point eight millimeter. That is a pilot parallels. Okay, 
So one of the things that uh, the, the guys at Tecker Inc. wanted me to make sure that I knew, and, and it's, I'm glad that they do this, is they've tested their inks very, very thoroughly. Uh, they've taken latex sacks and, and soaked them in ink for months at a time. They've used the inks in vintage pens, in modern pens. They've had no issues with them. I can say I have had no issues with them either, although I have not put these inks in any of my vintage pens. A, I don't have that many, and B, the ones that I do are really delicate, and so even just on the very, very off risk that something goes wrong, I, I don't want to have to try to take them apart. Um, but according to the Tecker folks, the ink is really, really solid. Now, you can see here, uh, this is, it's an interesting ink. It's, it's not the most saturated ink in the world. It's a nice color. I, I like green a lot. I mean, I've said that several times, but uh, it, it gets a little, um, you know, we get a nice line here. The, the Lamy Vista, which is kind of dry, gets a little unsaturated. This ink likes a wet nib a lot, I think. You lose just a touch of the shading. There isn't a ton of shading on this ink, and it's not very binary. So you can see some shading here on the Twisby, but it's, it's a lot more gradual the shading except for like right there with the stub nib. Um, and then the flex nib, and this is one thing that I was really, really impressed with when it comes to the flex nib is this Custom Heritage 912 has given me ink flow problems basically from day one. Some inks just do not like this pen and those that do like this pen, oftentimes the feed can't keep up. With this Tecker ink, it flowed like butter through this, uh, through this pen. I had no problems with ink starvation. I had no problems with, with it getting gummed up or with the feed being unable to keep up. The flow was just perfect all the way through. And I used this quite a bit and I didn't have a single hard start or skip or anything, not a railroad. For some reason, there's something about this particular Tecker ink that likes the Custom Heritage 912 with the Falcon nib. So, the FA nib, rather. So just, just be aware of that. If you have one of these Pilot Custom Heritage 912s and it's been giving you some problems, you might want to try some of this Tecker ink and see if it works for you. Um, and then you've got, you know, obviously more shading here from the 3.8 millimeter, but you can see it does take a lot to get shading. It, it, you need quite a big difference between the, the wet, which is very, very wet, and the dry um, here. So that's the way that the ink writes, and it does very well on most papers. So let me walk you through some of the other um, review, the full written reviews that I did here. This is the, this is Rhodia paper, and this was when the pen was very wet. So you can see a little bit of, of kind of pooling and almost sheen right here. It's kind of this dark purple reddish thing, um, but this was very, very, very wet. Uh, this is more like what you would see normally. So it's it's good moderate shading, but not the, the biggest shading in the world. It has a very matte finish to it, though. Um, same pens that I used before. See, again, more shading there. On Rhodia paper, this ink has very, very good dry times. Uh, this is some of the lowest dry times. These are some of the lowest dry times, rather, I have ever seen on Rhodia paper. And... Uh, and so if you're going to use Rhodia paper and you need something that dries pretty quickly, this ink does surprisingly well on Rhodia in that respect. You can see, again, some shading here, but not the most in the world. Here is, uh, again, you get some of the pooling right around the edges, and then as you go toward a, a slightly less saturated drier swab here. It's not terribly water-resistant, um, you know, if it's just a little bit of water, it, you can still s keep the lines. You get a little bit of like grayish blue ghosting here. Doesn't particularly care for ammonia, but bleach doesn't wipe out as much of it as some other inks. It still keeps a lot of the blue intact, but the green gets uh, zapped out. And then in terms of bleed, there's none. There is absolutely no bleed on this paper. Even with my super wet writing that I did up here at the top, no bleed at all. So that, that is actually quite good. Uh, the color, you've got green with a little bit of a gray-blue undertone. Very good dry times. There's no feathering at all on this paper. 
I mean, just absolutely no feathering. This is a very nicely behaved ink. Uh, the flow is very good. It's nicely lubricated, so medium high. I have saturation as medium high. I might revisit this to just medium. Um, I think the room where I did this, wrote the test, was a little darker than it is in here. Now that I've got all these lights, the saturation looks a little bit lower than it than it did in the other room where I wrote this out. Medium shading, not really any sheen to speak of. There is basically no show through, and water resistance is kind of medium low. So that's Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at the cream colored uh, Tomoe River, or Tomato River, as I've heard it called. Uh, again, you know, wet ink up here, and you get some nice shading and depth of color. And then you can see here uh, a little bit of sheen right there on, on the really wet, pooly areas. The dry times from Rhodia did not seem to transmit over to the Tomoe River. I mean, even at 30 seconds, there's just a hint of wetness still on the paper. Uh, for, I don't know what it is about Tomoe River in particular, but it just didn't seem to like that dry time quite as much as it did on Rhodia. So, um, again, not a ton of shading, and you can see the, the, the Q-tip swab right there. So here we have, again, not a single bit of bleed anywhere on this paper. Color, it's green with a bit of a blue undertone this time. About average dry times for Tomoe River paper. No feathering, again, very good flow, again. Lubrication, still medium high. Saturation, medium. Shading, medium. Uh, sheen, I say medium here, but it's, it's probably, a, you know, you can see little bits of it in certain spots around the paper, but it's not super high, so that's probably a little high, even I'd say low sheen. Um, and then show through is, is a bit medium, and it's hard to tell in this light, but there's more show through on the Tomoe River, as you would expect, than there is on the Rhodia paper. And finally, uh, for different types of paper, I took a look here at the inexpensive Staples copy paper. So even with the 3.8 millimeter and the Flex, there's next to no feathering, which is really superb. I mean, it's just very, very minor feathering. Uh, fine, medium, and broad all do really well, even the, the 1.5 millimeter. We start to see a bit more feathering down here where it's really wet. Um, and again, a bit more feathering, but not as much as you'd expect. And you actually get better shading on this paper than you do on any of the other papers. Uh, I feel like this, it shades better on this paper than it did on Rhodia or Claire, excuse me, I keep saying Rhodia or Claire Fontaine, Rhodia or Tomoe River. Uh, in terms of the characteristics, bleed, it does bleed a little bit. You can see it here, but not perhaps as much as you might expect for as wet as it is. And I only got it on the flex writing and the 3.8 millimeter. Really just like tiny itty bits of bleed on the 1.5 millimeter and the broad. But aside from that, no bleed. And aside from the bleed, very little show through. Um, again, green with a blue undertone. Medium low dry times. I, I did the dry times on the back. So this is a slightly longer dry time for this absorptive copy paper than I was expecting. Usually it's two to five seconds. The fact that it had to go up to 10 um, is a little bit higher than normal for this paper, but it's, it's still low in the grand scheme of things. Low feathering, still good flow, still good lubrication. Saturation is about medium. Shading is medium low. Um, sheen, there's none, and show through is pretty low. So surprisingly, this Tecker ink does very, very well on inexpensive paper, at least on this inexpensive paper it does. And then if we want to take a look at the chromatography, I've got both a long sample and a short sample. I did it in, um, this one's about three minutes, this one's about 45 minutes, just so you can kind of see a side by side. So light blue, kind of a khaki brown color, a, a nice wide edge of kind of a dark green with a blue leading edge there. Just a hint of purplish almost right along that, that leading edge there. And then in terms of the longer sample, the light blue get, is what gets left behind. And then everything else kind of crams its way back up. It's still obviously the same colors, but we see less of the khaki that we see down here. 
um, and less of the green, too, that kind of gets uh, crammed up toward the leading edge of the chromatography. And then, if we wanted to take a look at a few comparables, here is the Tecker Ink Emerald, and that is the hex code of this particular ink, number 226D15. So here's Rohrer and Klingner Alt Goldgrün, Private Reserve Avocado. We've got Pelican Edelstein Aventurine, some Mont Blanc Irish Green. And you can see here, with some of these, it's, it's obviously quite a bit less saturated than Irish Green or Avocado. Um, but, and, and it's darker than the Aventurine, but it's still not, you know, it's not terribly unsaturated. We've got some Lier Sauvage, or however it's pronounced, the Graf von Faber Castell Moss Green. Actually, this is a pretty close match here. Um, to perhaps this was a bit wetter than that, but, um, but very close in, in color family. I'm going to set that aside. Uh, Diamine Sherwood Green, some Diamine Emerald Green, also a pretty close match in color, and De Atramentis Lily of the Valley. So I'd say of the three colors, uh, the, the matches that I have, Lily of the Valley from De Atramentis, Diamine Emerald, and Graf von Faber-Castell Moss Green are the closest in color. And obviously with an ink like this, color is a little subjective because They'll make it in whatever color you want. Um, so, for instance, if this, you know, this Rohr and Klingner Alt Gold Grün was a little bit closer to what I wanted, I could scan it in or take a photo of it, make sure it's color corrected, and then use a tool online to find out what the hex code would be to look for. You know, it's it's really nice if there's a color out there you want or that's really close uh, that you just can't find. You know, I'm thinking of uh, the Mont Blanc Leonardo da Vinci Red Chalk. You might be able to find a sample of that and scan it in or take a photo of it and get really close to it if you wanted to. It's a neat system. And uh, that's the thing about this that I like. It's, it's new days. Uh, I'm sure that the, the ink characteristics, some of the ink characteristics like sheen and things like that, are when, when you're, they're mixing off a base color or you know off a base ink and adding different dyes and pigments in, uh, probably just dyes, not pigments, into the um, into the base. There's going to be some limitations on exactly what that ink can do. So I will tell you that from a performance standpoint, there are few inks I have ever tried that flow better than this ink. This ink just flows beautifully. It's got really, really nice lubrication. It cleans easily. I've been really, really impressed with the performance characteristics of this ink. I'm impressed with the way it works on inexpensive copy paper. I wish it had a bit more shading. I wish it had a bit more sheen. And I wish it was just a touch more saturated. Now, that lack of saturation may be from the hex code that they use to generate this ink, or it could be that the, it, the ink, when it goes out on the paper, just isn't that saturated. Uh, so I have another ink from them that uh, they, they put together for me that I like even better. It's an aubergine purple color, and it reminds me a lot of Sailor Bung Box Piano Mahogany. It's a beautiful color, and I'll, I'm sure I'll put some photos up of that at some point here in the not-too-distant future as well. Um, but overall, I've been really impressed by the thought process that's gone into making these inks, the testing they've done, the, the writing characteristics of the ink. I've been really impressed with this ink. Now, uh, one of the things that I'm hearing a lot is that there's a pretty big lag time between when you place the order and when you get your ink. And I've asked, I've asked the guys about this, and they've said, yeah, right now it is a bit of a lag time. This is a new enterprise, so just be aware that with many new enterprises, there are going to be some hiccups in the process. Uh, so far, the people who have gotten their inks have been largely pleased with them, as far as I've been able to see online. But if you're expecting to place an order on Monday and have the ink in your hands by Friday, that's probably pretty unlikely. I think you're looking at more at a few weeks or maybe longer. Um, and hopefully over time, as, as they work out the kinks in the system, uh, they should be able to get through things a lot more quickly. Um, but overall, you know, I, I'm really encouraging of any company that wants to try something new in this space. And 
we fountain pen nerds go ape poopy over our inks. We just lose our minds over inks. A new color comes out and we all have to have the color. We all have to have the shimmer. We all have to have the whatever. So uh, in terms of this ink, I'm a big fan. It writes really well. I love the concept. And I think over the next year or two, it'll be really, really interesting to see how this whole concept plays out and, and what people come to think of this ink. And if there are other characteristics we might be able to see at some point in the future added into the ink kind of on demand. So uh, a huge thank you to Tecker Ink for providing this ink for review purposes. As I mentioned, if you uh, are not a regular visitor to penhabit.com or if you don't follow me on the social medias, especially Facebook and Twitter, I would recommend you do so because I will be doing a giveaway. Uh, they've allowed me to give away two bottles of ink, so I'll be doing one bottle of for each person. You'll just, you know, basically you'll tell me what hex code you want and, uh, and give me your address and they'll mix the ink and send it to you. So a huge thank you to them for providing the ink for review and for the giveaways that will be coming up soon. So visit penhabit.com or follow me on the social media networks like Facebook or Twitter to find out when. In any case, that should do it for this ink spot review of the Tecker Ink Emerald. And let me get that, that uh, hex code again. It's number 226D15. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below on YouTube or over on penhabit.com in the comments section over there. And we will see you here next time for another pen review or ink review here on The Pen Habit. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to The Pen Habit. The ink for this review was provided free of charge by Tecker, and they will be doing a couple of giveaways as well, so stay tuned for that coming up. But, um, oh my gosh. Okay, focus, Matt. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at a new ink from a new company. They're based in California, started by a couple of guys, farted by a couple of guys, and I need to just give up right now.